Right. Um, I just thought it'd be good, you know, we've been discussing um, some real, real issues. And, and, and thank you, Rupa, for that um, scripture, Philippines 1.9. Uh, it talks about love, talks about knowledge, talks about dis discernment, you know, that love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment. I think that's, um, that's something that we, that we need, that all of us need. Um, um, so praise God for that, that we can make this our prayer. So thank you. Um, I, I just thought, you know, maybe we could uh, take some time, maybe about five minutes um, uh, uh, right away. And um, you know, this is also something that I learned from the workshop. So I just thought it's, it's a good a good exercise to do. Um, you know, I'm just putting that statement here. Um, okay, it says, uh, in my relationship with, okay, you can put the name of the person. Uh, maybe it's uh, it's a colleague. Um, I would say, you know, maybe, uh, you know, if you, those of you are working, maybe you can put the name of, of, of a colleague uh, or a boss, <laughs> you know, um, you know, to say, I, I want to be a servant leader. Okay, So let me just read the sentence, like, in my relationship with Dash, I want to be a servant leader by taking the following action or actions. So... Uh, you could think of several uh, different settings. Maybe if you're a student in a in a college or university, you know you could think of okay, uh, in my relationship, and think of difficult people. Don't uh, you know exclude difficult people. Uh, I think it would be good if if you can have one difficult people person. You know, in so you can just write three. Uh, you know, pick three people and say in my relationship with. Uh, it could be a spouse, your spouse. You know, you can write the name of your spouse and say, "I want to be a servant leader," by taking the following action. Uh, following actions, you know, say, "Okay, this is what I want to do." It could be, you know, it could be your children, right? Children, children maybe are difficult. Maybe they are uh, rebellious. Maybe they are, I don't know, whatever. Uh, you know, they are going through issues, uh, but. You know, have you have you thought of serving your children? You know, maybe simple things like uh, I don't know. You know, it could be different things like um, uh, how to serve them better, right? Um, by taking the following action. So let's take um, five minutes to uh, think of different people. Maybe colleague, maybe uh, a family member, maybe um, you know, maybe a fellow student, uh, someone, and uh, and say maybe your in-laws. Right. Uh, think of some difficult scenarios and say, OK, um, I want to be a servant leader by taking the following action. OK, uh, I'm not going to ask you what those actions are. And so you don't have to worry. Right. So you can just go ahead and uh, uh, and, and write. OK, uh, so let's take five minutes. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe. Yeah, it's now 11 four, uh, maybe 11 nine or something. I'll I'll come back. OK, OK.
I hope it's going fine. Um, you can try and be, you know, as specific as possible, right? So that it's clear for you. Um, it'll be helpful if you're specific. Okay, so uh, I mean, you can, if you've not completed, you can, you know, go ahead and complete it. Um, but I was just looking at, um, you know, uh, work-wise, like ministry-wise, what I can do to serve. And some of the things involved, uh, some tasks that I have to do in order to empower people, in order to facilitate people to do, uh, to be even, you know, to, um, to do things even better. Know, the, for them to minister even uh, you know even uh, in a successful manner um, and also relationally um, um, that to, to improve things um, to get in touch to be in touch so something something on those lines um, and also with family right to it was uh, I think one of the things that I uh, got was to encourage. Right. So how to encourage and um, so some specifics also on those lines, like spiritually um, and also something like uh, when it, and also it involved uh, writing down uh, spiritually specifically, what would you do? What would I do? What should I do? And then also um, when it came to leisure or some just fun things, you know, uh, what I could do, you know, maybe it's not like um, uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, I listed down was it's, it's not. Um, it's not something that I would volunteer to do or I would love to do, but uh, yeah, but I just felt that, uh, okay, I would do it. You know, I, I need to do this. Okay. Then uh, also about, yeah, extended family, some of those things um, that maybe um, I was, uh, you know, delaying or going slow on. Um, some specifics I had written down. So yeah, hopefully you um, you also... Um, you know, wrote down certain things, um, and uh, and don't worry. You know, you, you you your intentions are good. Now you may you know you might have um, in the back of your mind, you know, like uh, how is it going to be received? How is it going to be? Um, you know, will it be reciprocated? Uh, will it be received well? Uh, don't worry about that. Um, so you go ahead and do it anyway. Right? Your intentions are clear. Uh, you want to serve, right? And uh, and yeah, uh, one thing that I realized was as I was listing down, um, I realized that I, uh, of course, it, it involves um, my choice. I I need to intentionally do it, and you know maybe sacrifice certain things, and uh, and also uh, take initiative, etc. But also, I uh, you know I need to really draw from the Holy Spirit, right? Draw strength from the Holy Spirit uh, in order to do this. Some of these things are, you know, it comes naturally. Temperamentally, I'm okay and, and I'll just flow with it. But some things, you know, uh, certain things of the flesh uh, need to die, you know, in myself. So uh, I would need um, uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit so that I can, you know, like we see in Romans 8, if by the Spirit we put to death the deeds of the body, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, some great sinful acts or something, but, you know, just intentions, motives, uh, choices, right? Uh, but we can put to death those things so that we can be released to um, carry out and serve uh, better. And so, yeah, so those were some things, uh, uh, some of the things that I jotted down. 
um yeah abraham you've shared brave man okay in my relationship with the lord's army okay i want to be a servant leader by taking the following actions loving them not counting their weaknesses against them uh, teaching them to obey the standards in scripture seeing them as people who are willing and trying their best to serve the lord wonderful um yeah so you can uh yeah so you you can even you know go further you know how do i love them of course it starts with um, with you know praying for them and saying okay uh, i'm going to you know i'm going to demonstrate love for them i'm going to um you know in my heart right i'm going i'm going to love them but um you know uh, and and not really i think you've put it rightly not counting their weaknesses so if i see limitations if i see weaknesses i'm going to say okay uh, i'm going to love them anyway so that's that's wonderful and also you can think of you know uh, what would demonstrate that love you know, is it words is it action um how how can i demonstrate that love yeah looking for those teachable moments maybe formal teaching sessions maybe informal you know uh, teachable moments when you're doing stuff with them right um so that would help as well uh seeing them as people who are willing and trying their best yeah wonderful thank you thanks abram so um so let's do it right let's uh let's um uh, go ahead and carry it out okay okay so uh let's move on uh we are moving on to um looking at those we want to look at those seven insights okay so the first thing that we see um let me just share the screen first thing that we see is that uh, the lord jesus uh was very clear about his purpose okay the reason he came what he was supposed to be doing um and and i think you you see it right from the start uh, right from the start when he as a young child he was at the temple and when the parents asked him you know don't you care that you know we were we were we were we were scared we were afraid and where you were and and he said you know i must be in my father's house right uh, i must be about my father's business and father's house so uh, he was right from that age we see that uh, that sense of purpose uh, and why he he was there being very very strong and um and and this is something that as a leader that or as leaders that we can uh, uh we can pray we can uh, you know um ask the lord and and also intentionally you know grasp that and, uh, because the lord can put it in our hearts and there can be a description of it you know in a formal setting okay this is what you need to do etc but um with our hearts we really need to grasp it right and and maybe you and remind ourselves over and over again uh and renew our minds over and over again to the purpose you know sometimes uh, uh you know we we can get distracted we can slow down um and because um that picture is not very clear right uh, our actions can be um you know misplaced or our actions uh, may not come with great effort because that purpose is not clear in our minds or it's not um, you know it's something is um hiding that or something is slowing us down right so as a leader the lord jesus knew his purpose and right? is very clear um and it included some not so nice things right some very exciting things breaking down the works of the enemy um you know destroying the works of the enemy being filled with the spirit communicating the good news of the kingdom right prophesying you know um here's a man without guile some signs and wonders supernatural things peter go you know drop that fishing hook you will get a fish it will be carrying a coin in its mouth you know, wonderful things or peter you know put your nets on the other side and uh, net breaking boat load sinking kind of boat sinking kind of a load of fish uh, exciting wonderful things but also it included uh, you know some not so exciting you know, what we would typically term as exciting uh facing uh persecution right facing ridicule um 
being wrongly accused right people not not being understood right and and also the uh, the purpose of the mission to to die on the cross carrying the sin of the whole world and uh, and uh, the consequence of it um uh, you know a, a sinless person carrying that and so we see that it included all that right but uh, the purpose was very clear okay uh, in the words of the lord jesus we see it in john chapter 12 and verse 27 you know now my soul is troubled but what shall i say father save me from this hour but for this purpose i came to this hour right so he's saying but for this purpose i came to this hour this hour um in uh, obviously um you know when you look at uh, let's just read that john chapter 12 verse 27 you see that uh, um um uh yeah so um it it happens uh, if you if you look if you look at verse 23 sorry uh, jesus answered them saying the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified okay so he's talking about this time frame it's uh, you know it's it's now it's it's nearing now um it's it's becoming it's becoming nearer closer to what is going to happen right um so he's saying the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified and he's talking about the grain of wheat falling to the ground dying and producing much grain and, and he's sharing all that and even as he's sharing you know this the soul is troubled you know the mind the the will uh, everything is uh, uh, you know it's, it's troubled there's a turmoil there's a tumult and and he's you know he's been frank about it he's saying so, um, um soul is troubled but what shall i say you know this is the purpose right so um he was very very clear about his purpose the purpose for which he came now we know that you now jesus did what he did being empowered by the holy spirit right now before we make that statement saying okay that was jesus but this is me right that was that was son of god but this is me the scripture is very clear i right? um when we see, look at uh, the book of acts we see that he went about doing good uh, destroying the works of the enemy and he did it empowered by the holy spirit and the lord jesus himself said the works that i do you will do also uh, because i go to my father and the key being going to my father was that he would send the holy spirit that we would not be alone that he would be with us that he would empower us anoint us fill us um to walk in the paths of our lord right path of our lord so um so he is is very clear very sure uh, and very clear okay uh, matthew 16 verses 21 to 23 and from that time jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day and peter then peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying far be from it uh, far be it from you lord this shall not happen to you but he turned and said to peter get behind me satan you are an offense to me for you are not mindful of the things of god but the things of men okay so uh you know Uh, but it's 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 really interesting to see that Matthew 16 i think we would have you would have um, studied this uh, earlier as well uh, Matthew 16 and when we when we uh, look when we read from you know chapter uh, verse 13 onwards right um, so this is verse 21 but when we read from verse 13 onwards we see that uh, um, the lord jesus asks a question you know who do men say that i am uh i the son of man am and uh, and they said you know john the baptist some said elijah some jeremiah and then the lord you know kind of uh, is very specific he's saying who do you say that i am and simon peter answers you are christ the son of the living god and uh, the lord says in verse 17 blessed are you simon bar jona for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven he has revealed this to you this revelation has come to you from the father you know blessed are you wonderful and i also say to you that you are peter right and on this rock 
you Seth as you are, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail, shall not prevail against it. And I, I will give you the keys of the kingdom, the authority and so on, right? Um, so all this happens just before um, this thing where he, where he rebukes Peter and he says, Far, yeah, and rebukes um, Peter and he says, you know, get behind me, Satan. Okay. Um, so the, the thing is, it's amazing that the Lord, by the Spirit, could discern what was revealed by the Father uh, regarding his purpose, uh, regarding his identity and purpose and so on, and what was um, what was the work of the enemy, what was the influence of the enemy. Right? Within, you know, within minutes, right? um, and he, and he, and he uh, uses strong language, you know, so he says, uh, get behind me, Satan, you are an offense to me. So he knew that what was, uh, you know, for we do not fight against flesh and blood, and but against powers and principalities. So he, he knew what was actually influencing Peter, or who was influencing Peter to make that pronouncement, right? And um, so, so turn to Peter and said, you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. So purpose, so powerful, uh, knowing it is very empowering. Knowing it will enable us to to put our back, uh, you know, our efforts and everything to to just pursue pursue that. Right? It'll it'll walk will keep us awake at night. It'll what what will make us wake up early. Uh, so uh, we we know that you know we have resources uh, and time is a resource. Our abilities, you know, another resource, um, and of course, you know, material resources and all that. We have resources, but if we do not um, understand the purpose, if we do not come to a place of a clarity in our purpose, then our efforts will be uh, you know, a, a waste in these resources, right? whether it's uh, time, whether it's our abilities you know, being put to good use, um, whether it's material resources and, and, uh, uh, and, and so on. Right? So, so we need to know what our purpose is. Right? The question I think we would ask is, you know, I'm at a stage where I do not know what my call is, right? Um, I'm at a stage where I do not know, okay, what does God call me for? Maybe some of us could be, you know, saying that, stating that, I don't know. Well, that's fine, right? But right now, in the, in the stage of life, season of life that you are in, and whatever that you're doing right now, whether it's equipping, whether it's, you know, getting trained for something, um, we have, you have certain responsibilities. And with that comes the purpose, okay? Um, you know, I, I need to fulfill this things. You know, I, I, you know, it could be very simple. I've enrolled in this and I need to fulfill this. I need to give my all towards this. Um, I don't want to coast through this, float through this, right? So um, so that's a very strong thing. That's a very strong, um, you know, purpose. So, you know, just to clarify, okay, what do we call as purpose? Okay, uh, a couple of things um, that we can look at. I'm just putting it in the chat. I will also read it out. Okay. Um, so purpose, when you say purpose, we're saying the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Okay. So, so clarity in that. Okay. It could be just one thing. Okay. I'm going to do this and this is why. The why, uh, you know, if it's clear and then the actions for what we need to do will be clear as well. You know, will be, will be, um, Will be fruitful. You know, the effort put in will be uh, will be good. Right? Will be productive. Okay. So, um, to purpose. So let's be clear about uh, what our purpose. Uh, you know, maybe in in tasks that we need to do. Um, and uh, and uh, one thing that we see is that the Lord is um, you know taking us through seasons, seasons of equipping, seasons of developing. Uh, season uh, and, and a season of commissioning, 
right? And we we go through the seasons right through, and we step into the call, and there is a there is a growing in that as well, and we and we and we you know mature in that, and we and we and we grow in that, right? As a like we see, you know, the path of a believer, uh, uh, one one is a believer, and then learns to follow the Lord, becomes a you know disciple of the Lord, um, you know, following his following his teaching, following the person, um, and then goes on to be a minister because you discover the call of God, you discover the things of God, you discover uh, the gifts, you know, all the things, and you begin to serve. You know, when you say minister, we're just serving in, in different ways. Maybe it's a pulpit ministry, maybe it's a fivefold ministry, maybe it's uh, something to do in the body of Christ as a, as a, you know, a membership gift. And so we are, we are serving, so we are ministering and and during the course of that, the Lord, you know, continues to um, put things in us, take things out of us, that we begin to be, you know, we come to a place of being fathers and, and mothers, right? We come to a place of raising up sons and daughters, uh, raising up leaders who can, uh, again, do the same thing, right? So we go through that, we go through that path, and it, and it continues our whole life as, uh, you know, on this side of eternity as believers, right? So as as followers of the Lord Jesus. So, um, so that continues. So, um, so the Lord uh, takes us through that. So whatever season we are in, you know, uh, the thing is to be um, to have a strong grip on. Okay, what is the Lord doing in my life, uh, and can I give myself uh, wholeheartedly to the things uh, that are the uh, that that He's doing in my life, and and of course, what is the why behind what He's doing? Right. So, and the Lord is more than willing to uh, show us. Um, uh, reveal to us. I just want to remind us again from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse verse 10, right? Uh, or maybe verses 9 and 10. Um, so but as it is written, of course, the context is uh, about the revelation of the gospel and uh, the revelation and speaking the hidden things, the mysteries of God. But the context is that. But but this is the, the functioning of the role of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, it says, as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Okay, the plans, the purposes of God. Uh, verse 10, but God has revealed them so God has prepared them. God has revealed them through, revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So, um, so, th so this is something that we see, the spirit of God revealing um, the plans, the purposes of God. Okay, so so we seek, we walk uh, in in what is immediate, and we continue to seek and have a strong grip on uh, on the purposes of God right, for our lives. Okay, so the thing is this: you know, it's not just about us personally, but it's also about where the Lord places us and the lives that are connected to our lives. Right. He said, you know, leadership is an influence for good uh, um, to to help others, right? to to direct others, to help others, and to help others achieve um, um, the goals, right? So the thing is this. Uh, so since there are other lives, you know, maybe in a formal setting, it could be, you know, maybe you're, a, you're leading a team uh, and uh, maybe in an organization. Uh, but informally also, you see that you know, you're, you are an influencer for good. You are a leader. Like we said, you know, each one of us, uh, the Lord has placed people in our lives who are connected to us, who are looking looking up to us, right? And whom, to whom we are spokespersons of, you know, hope and, and so on, right? So since we are connected to others, we are leading others, and we need to be strong in our in the purpose, uh, the collective purpose for this particular reason. Right? You know, if you look at uh, the Lord Jesus, uh, his, his words, he's talking about the Pharisees. Okay, so Matthew chapter fifteen and 
verse 14 it says let them alone they are blind leaders of the blind and if the blind leads the blind both will fall into a ditch right so uh, he's talking about the pharisees and he's saying they are blind leaders of the blind so if we are not clear if you're not seeing where we are going and uh, uh, and if you're not seeing by faith even then the destinies of others right? we are we are leading them uh, to another place uh, where they are not meant to go. Right? So this is something that we need to be um, we need to be clear about. We need to have a strong grip on, just like the Lord uh, had a strong grip on the purpose. Okay. So um, yeah. So uh, that's something that we need to be uh, uh, mindful of because the Lord. Uh, led by example, strong about his purpose. Um, that we see is that the Lord was selfless. Okay, uh, he like we see that in in Matthew twenty, we see that the Lord saying, you know, um, that you need to be a servant, you need to serve. And uh, here, um, you know, uh, another scripture is that the the Lord Jesus Himself has said that the Son of Man did not come to serve. Um, uh, did not come to be served, but to serve, right? And to give his life a ransom for many, verse 28. Right? So we see that, um, you know, we are called to be selfless. You know? So in every action, in other words, you know, in every action, in every, uh, every step that we are taking, everything that we are doing, if we are going to ask that question, you know, what's in it for me? You know, how do I get to gain by this? In what way will I benefit uh, from this? Then uh, we are missing the point, right? Um, look at uh, Philippians two, verses three and five, three to five. You know, it, it puts things in perspective, and there is also a certain wholeness which comes, right? It's not skewed to one one side it's you know it brings that balance and and wholesomeness okay let's read that verse philippians 2 verses 3 to 5 let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself verse 4 let each of you look out not only for his own interests but also for the interests of others let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus and and we know talks about how uh, he being in the um, uh, 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 he being god himself he did not consider robbery to be equal with god but you know um, he, he 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 took off uh, all that and took on the form of a bond servant and came down and we see that right let this mind be in you which was in christ jesus but uh, so the uh, verse 4 says, uh, you know, let each of you look out, not only for his own interests. Of course, you know, there are some legitimate interests or legitimate things um, for for us personally, right, that we need to maybe fulfill, that we need to, you know, these are legitimate things, right? And so there's nothing wrong in pursuing that. There's nothing wrong in getting that done. So he says, not only, you know, look out not only for your interests, but also. So there is a not only, and there is a but also, right? So so what follows after that, f those phrases is very important. So not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. So that's that brings that. And many times, you know, there is a conflict, conflict between, you know, uh, between the not only and what follows not only and what follows but also right? uh, there could be a conflict of uh, uh, in that but uh, those are the times when we choose and we choose to sacrifice right um, not only for the, our own interests but also for the interests of others okay so uh, in the in, in the path of the lord to be a leader to be selfless and uh, many times it uh, you know the 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 work that we do the the role that we, we are in calls for that right to be selfless um, where many times we, we we need to put aside our own interests and say okay this is better for the group this is better for 
uh, the team and therefore let's do it, you know, um, and, and we go ahead and do that, right? Okay, any thoughts on these two? Um, if, you'd, uh, if you'd like to share some examples of, uh, you know, uh, clarity of purpose, uh, helping you, or maybe uh, when the purpose was not clear, uh, how it really did not help you, Okay, and the second thing being um, being selfless. You know, how easy was it? How difficult was it? How practical was it? Right, and and yeah. So any thoughts on that? You can go ahead. Um, let's talk about purpose first. Purpose. So a small part. Yeah, I'll pass. So go ahead, please. Uh, regarding the purpose, when we see the modeling of our Lord Jesus Christ, we see those disciples completely lost about the purpose and vision of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were completely on different track for most of the time. And uh, it was a great challenge for a servant leader to align and to make them realize the real purpose and and also not the real not only realizing but uh, passing on that purpose to them uh, to own, that they were owned it as their mm. own and gave them gave their all as jesus has given his all to us mm. it's a very great uh, challenging thing i think it's very challenging mm. it's learning mm. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, so, any uh, real life example? Uh, I, I just wanted to, you know, share this. Uh, I mean, it, it's a simple example, but uh, for me, it made a big difference. Um, like, um, you know, we we started the. Uh, I think it was in two thousand five, two thousand six, when we uh, when we introduced, you know, uh, cell groups or life groups um, as a model for the church, and uh, you know, when we did so. Um, we, we we spent some time studying about it, learning about it, and so on, and then we you know kind of introduced it. But what happened was personally for me, you know, I had a different picture in my mind, right? Uh, we're going to talk about vision, uh, you know, a little later, but um, you know, I, I had a different picture, a different picture of the model itself, right? It, it was a wrong understanding, so therefore the the purpose of that particular, you know, the reason for which, for which we are actually introducing that life group ministry, it was actually lost out on me. You know, despite several sessions, teaching sessions, I had something else in mind. And so when we went ahead and actually did it, you know, it, uh, I don't think we, I personally did it right. right? And um, it took a couple of, um, you know, a couple of, um, I would say, situations when, you know, we had, uh, you know, we were discussing and then, uh, and then pastor was sharing and then, then suddenly the lights came on, you know, he's pointing us back to, hey, this is what, this is the model. This is why we are doing. Okay. And then the why became even clearer. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. This is the why. And that is, you know, that's the reason we are doing it in this way. You know, when we, when if you think of life group or small groups, you know, there were there many things, right? You can have like um, like a house group meeting where you know forty people, fifty people come, and you could have like a mini church service. You could have Bible studies, uh, or you could have it like a discipleship model, which is what uh, which is what you know APC was doing, and APC is continuing to do a discipleship one where uh, people are connected to uh, the church uh, people in the life group are connected to the church and it's it's a it's a discipleship model which means that people are learning to uh, follow the lord jesus um, learning teach, uh, under uh, you know learning scripture understanding and and following together making that journey together and helping one another sharpening one another etc right but they're all connected to the big picture they're connected to the vision of the church connected to the church spiritually and you know so um it was a very simple thing but then i realized that 
um, not understanding the why actually led to a couple of situations, right? A couple of embarrassing situations. Um, so, so that just that clarity in purpose uh, brought a big change. Right? Brought a big change in 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 our own life group. Brought a big change in the way we would, uh, you know, uh, the way we would uh, uh, appoint leaders and start live groups and, and so on. So, so that helped us. And from, from my side, you know, I, I could just think of that, um, this one thing uh, about the purpose, right? Yeah. Uh, any others? Maybe a work situation, maybe um, something to do with the call of God, um. Yeah. Uh, so, Pastor, just wanted to add that uh, when we are defining the purpose, the moral aspect that should be added into it is very important. Um, because, for example, uh, uh, in a in a scenario like, let us say, you are running an audit firm, and uh, you are signing confidentiality clauses saying that your accounts will not be revealed to others, but uh, okay. Offline, if you get to know about a financial fraud, and uh, but that is not presented to you in the input records that are given to you, how would you handle uh, that? Uh, or, or even uh, if it comes to a scenario like you are working with two clients, and one client, uh, the financial account seems to be clean in your records, but uh, the other client uh, is a banker who is giving a loan, and then they are... Uh, uh, they uh, they think that it is clean, but they come to know that uh, it uh, it's it's not right. But you cannot reveal it to the person uh, person because you have signed a confidentiality clause. So mm. the moral aspects are always supersede uh, the re rest of the laws that uh, you define. Like you know, sometimes you may have to break the confidentiality clause, keeping the morality uh, in perspective. So uh, you you need to always see assess the situation on a picture like you know for for the same reason that you know you have all the corrupt money saved in world banks because there is a clause that you know whatever comes in and out it doesn't get revealed mm. <laughs> it's beyond bureaucracy uh, so uh, when we are defining a purpose it's very important that we stay aligned to be morally uh, right because there could be a lot of uh, firms that are defining the purposes which mm. uh, which can be beyond uh, what is morally right right yeah so true yeah yeah and uh, and praise god you know <laughs> the lord uh, i just think you know if you think of god being omnipotent all knowing um, present everywhere and and him being so infinitely holy you know where can we find such a combination? And um, you know when when he gives, uh, you know when he, when he sets out a plan and he says, you know, these are the plans I have for you. These are the thoughts I have for you. Um, and and when he backs it up by saying, okay, these are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Right? We can we can receive it hundred percent, right? Because uh, it comes with holiness it it comes with truth it comes with righteousness and so on so you know we can we can take it right so um so in terms of the call of god and and you know uh, when we look at it that you know um uh, the call of god and the purpose that comes upon our lives individually connected to the call um thank god you know it has all that you know the moral goodness and righteousness, and it's it's holy and uh, and and praise God for that, right? Yeah, but uh, you know, in a, a secular setting, yes, um, we need to have that. And I, I I also know that you know, when in a counseling situation, like we we always um, say, you know, that uh, there is a confidentiality clause which is signed, but then the clause also adds that you know, if there is a danger to uh, life, and if there is any danger or um, harm done, uh, you know, a, a situation which which results in you know uh, harm uh, uh, harm to one's uh, life. You know, the person who's actually signing the clause. Um, then the the uh, you know the the client or the uh, not the client, sorry, um, the one who's actually counselling has the 
you know ha- has goes beyond that and breaks the laws because it's um uh, some actions are resulting in the in the you know danger to life of the person who's being counseled right so, um so yeah okay so sam uh, start with the why by simon sinek yeah a good book that's true i've i read some videos i've not read the book uh, but uh, i've watched a couple of videos yeah very interesting um the the why the clarity in the why uh, normally you know the the what is um, has a lot of details right the working of it the outworking of it uh, we we'll have to uh, it involves skill it involves uh, learning some things and so it's it seems uh, you know uh, uh, it seems very attractive the what you know this is what it is but then um, the why which might be very very simple you know it can be just one thing uh, one idea one concept the why actually powers the whole thing right so the the purpose life's purpose um you know when uh, when we get uh, when we when we just grasp it right uh, it just powers our life you know um you look at all the um disciples and the kind of life transformation they had um w- one of course because of the main thing they were empowered by the spirit they were filled with the spirit and the spirit giving them showing them you know this very thing that we read what i has not seen what ear has not heard not what has entered into the heart of man you know giving that revelation of life purpose completely radically changed their lives right these um like uh, i'm just looking at the life of peter completely changed completely changed him uh, look at paul completely changed him uh, one who was persecuting now is going just doing the uh, you know the very uh, opposite thing uh, preaching the faith that he persecuted and doing so going through you know uh, many many sacrifices going through uh, many uh, dangers and uh, very difficult situations for him personally but at the same time you know pressing on and uh, it's it's amazing right and um, so uh, maybe you just close with this we just have a, yeah we're almost done uh close with this scripture um oops yeah um okay where um apollo it, it is in sorry this is in philippians chapter 3 verse 12 right so um he says not that i have already attained or am already perfected but i press on that i may lay hold of that for which christ jesus has also laid hold of me okay so he knows where which state he is in which level of maturity he is in but he just makes this you know i press on i press on i go forward that i may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me so he, that is very clear he knows that he's not reached he's not he knows that he's not attained but the reason for which Christ has laid hold of him well that's very clear now right and he says that i may lay hold of that for which Christ has laid hold of me verse 13 brethren i do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind reaching forward to those things which are ahead i press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of god in christ jesus you know some amazing revelation truth uh, inspiration you know coming from these three verses saying i lay hold of that for which christ hold of christ has laid hold of me i you know i forgetting those things that are behind i reach forward to those things which are ahead i press on i press towards the goal so this is what the why does to a person and um, as believers we it's, it's more than just the why right 
it's 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 the work of god's spirit and not just an event but every day every moment we have the spirit of god you know we have the opportunity to be filled with the spirit and and the why if it is if it is unclear if it has been you know shrouded because of various things maybe maybe because of sin maybe because of regret maybe because of pain uh we have an opportunity to come clean and uh, you know to have a strong firm grip on it so that we can also press on right okay i think we need to pray i know it's 3 minutes beyond the thing but we just need to pray so let me just quickly pray father we thank you god that you have laid hold of of us father god with a reason um which is uh, which is good your plans your thoughts for which we have laid hold of us and lord i pray that we will lay lay hold of that for which you laid hold of that of of us oh god and that plan that purpose god that we will Lord, have a strong firm grip on it god and no matter what comes no matter what storms no matter what tries to pry it away from that lord from us god i pray that lord we will just hold on and spirit of god i thank you that uh, you are with us empowering us uh, emboldening us god and like we read in the beginning god you are with us standing next to us uh, empowering us encouraging us so that the message the life message might be fully preached god, through our words through our actions god and uh, father god i pray that uh, yeah i pray let there be a clearing let there be a clarity let there be focus in each one of our lives and for whatever reason things are not clear i pray let there be healing um let there be breaking of bondages of chains um yeah if there's uh, inroads that the enemy has made into our lives through any of any of the means i just you know i just call it uh, uh, i just stop it in the name of jesus and uh, yeah i just pray for a reversal of that god we thank you we give you all the praise we give you all the glory at this time in jesus matchless name we pray amen amen awesome okay guys have a great week I'm mean, sorry great weekend uh we relax refresh to we'll catch up again uh next week okay yeah god bless see you guys